Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this session, I will be continuing with the spinal cord and in this session, we will be seeing the internal features of the spinal cord because many of you have requested uh, to do a session on the internal features of the spinal cord. Uh, so actually, I am not getting enough time to do all these things and I am trying my level best to make the board a bit bigger. I know it's, you are finding it difficult. So in this session, uh, we will be seeing the internal features of spinal cord. So before viewing this session, I would like you all to see the previous sessions on the spinal cord so that you will get a continuity for the same. So coming to the internal architecture of the spinal cord, we know that uh, we have the white matter outside and we have the gray matter inside. So it's just the reverse uh, as we see in the brain. So spinal cord, we have the outer white matter and an inner gray matter. So how are this uh, white matter and gray matter arranged? Gray matter you know they are the cell bodies and the white matter means they are the nerve fibers. That is the fundamental thing which you should know first. So it is the cluster of cell bodies of the neurons where what you call as gray matter and you have the axons of the same continuing as the uh, white matter of the uh, brain and spinal cord. So we will go move on to the gray matter so in this session i will be first focusing on the gray matter and the next session i will be talking about the rest laminar architecture and then we will be moving on to the white matter so that you will know how these uh, white matters white matter is coming from different parts of the uh, spinal cord so when we look at the session of the spinal cord we know that the outer portion is the white matter and inner to it you can see an h-shaped mass of uh, bodies of neurons and you call this as the gray matter okay so the gray matter in the spinal cord is arranged in the form of an h or if you just divide it into two equal halves you can uh, also say that it is in the form of a comma on both sides so that is how the gray matter in the spinal cord is arranged. Now talking about the different types of neurons you get in the gray matter. So structurally speaking, structurally speaking means you know, depending upon the length of the axons, there are mainly two types of neurons in the uh, gray matter of spinal cord. They are known as Golgi type 1 and Golgi type 2 neurons. So what is the difference between Golgi type 1 and type 2? Type 1 neurons have long axons whereas type 2 neurons are having short axons. So that is the structure, the structure wise classification of neurons. So they are type 1 and type 2 neurons. Type 1 they have long axons whereas type 2 have short axons. So that is according to the structure. Before moving on to the functional uh, classification of neurons, we will just have a look at the gray matter first. How this gray matter is further subdivided in the spinal cord. So the gray matter as, as I have already mentioned, it is in the form of an edge and in the center of the edge you can see a canal that is known as central canal of spinal cord central canal of spinal cord and this central canal of spinal cord is actually a continuation from above we have seen the fourth ventricle within the pons and medulla so that is actually continuing down into the spinal cord in the form of central canal lined by ependymal cells so uh, where is the downward uh, extension of the central canal or how far it reaches so we know that the lowermost portion of the spinal cord, you know, you, you call it as cornus medullaris, right? So at the region of cornus medullaris, this central canal will just get a bit dilated to form the terminal ventricle. So fourth ventricle in the pons and medulla, then the central canal of spinal cord and in the cornus medullaris, you call it as terminal ventricle. And the terminal ventricle will extend say roughly to 4 to 5 millimeters into the phylum terminal as well. Okay, so that is about the central canal. So where will you get the central canal? Central canal will be seen in the edge shaped limb, the horizontal limb of the edge of the grey matter. So this grey matter is actually divided into a large anterior portion that is known as anterior horn of the grey matter is a narrow slender portion that is known as the posterior horn okay so you have an anterior horn and a posterior horn so compared to the posterior horn anterior horn is a bit bigger 
that is how, how you should differentiate the anterior horn and posterior horn and uh, these two are actually connected by a grey commissure so both sides are connected by a grey commissure which runs through the middle and in this grey commissure you get the central canal okay the central canal is situated in the grey commissure which connects the two sides of grey matter and this central canal is actually dividing the uh, grey matter or the grey commissure here into a ventral portion and a dorsal portion okay so if you just have the grey commissure here you have the central canal here you have a ventral portion and you have a dorsal portion okay so this grey commissure is divided into a ventral portion and a dorsal portion by the central canal of spinal cord and uh, you can also call the grey commissure around the central canal as substantia gelatinosa centralis I am mentioning this as centralis because we, we will be seeing uh, another type of substantia gelatinosa. So for the time being here, the grey matter around the central canal, you call it as substantia gelatinosa centralis. Okay. And uh, the central canal divides this uh, region of grey commissure into a ventral portion and a dorsal portion. Why I am stressing on this point is, it is through the ventral portion we have the crossing of the spinothalamic tract. Okay, so the ventral portion, it is through the ventral portion you have the crossing of the spinothalamic tract. So when we talk about the white matter of uh, the spinal cord, you will get to know the details how these crossing and all are occurring. We will be dealing with, the, the, with that topic soon. So why is it called substantia gelatinosa? Gelatinosa means a transparent part where you have a limited number of myelinated nerve fibers arising the, and it is um, somewhat transparent in nature and mostly you will get the neuroglial cells around the uh, central canal that is what it is said. So you have the ventral and dorsal portion based upon the level of the central canal and again one more thing you have to know the central canal is not exactly in the center of this grey commissure throughout the uh, spinal cord it varies the position of the central canal so we can say that in the cervical region and in the thoracic region it is more towards the ventral aspect okay to more towards the ventral aspect in the lumbar region it is almost in the center center of the gray commissure so this is the lumbar region okay so this is the cervical region this is the thoracic region and this is the lumbar region so in the cervical region and thoracic region it is more towards the ventral aspect but when it comes to the lumbar region the central canal is almost in the center of the gray commissure and when you move on towards the caudal aspects this central canal will move towards the dorsal aspect that is uh, the position of central canal of spinal cord so now we mentioned about the anterior horn, posterior horn and the grey commissure. We know that the anterior horn is a little bit bulky whereas the posterior horn is thin, narrow. And uh, sometime, and where will you get this anterior horn bulky? When you compare the uh, spinal cord, the entire spinal cord, we know that the anterior horn is a bit larger in two regions. One cervical region and second position is lumbosacral region. So can you imagine the reason why this anterior horn is bigger in cervical region and lumbosacral region? How these two regions are different from the rest of the spinal cord? We know that in the cervical region and lumbosacral region, we have in addition to the trunk, we have the limb muscles to be supplied by the spinal cord. Okay, so the uh, neurons, the axons of the neurons in the ventral horn will be going to supply all these muscles that is the reason why the anterior horn of gray matter is bigger in cervical region and in lumbosacral region so that is the reason why we when we mention the thoracic region it is a bit narrower compared to the other two regions that also you have to keep in mind when you draw but again when you have a look at the thoracic region you can see one more horn there apart from the a ventral and dorsal horn anterior horn and posterior horn one more extra horn but this horn we haven't drawn in the cervical region or nor in the uh, lower lumbar and sacral regions what is the reason this horn is known as lateral horn 
okay lateral horn so what is the peculiarity of this lateral horn so the neurons here in the lateral horn are giving rise to the sympathetic outflow sympathetic outflow means you have the sympathetic nervous system coming from the brain and it should exit finally and it it should travel along with the peripheral nerves right so it should come out through the spinal cord and its exit the gate through which it makes its exit from the central nervous system is through the uh, lateral horn and where will you look for the la lateral horn it is from t1 to l2 that is why it is known as thoracolumbar outflow so thoracolumbar outflow so in the regions of t1 from t1 to l2 if you take sections of the spinal cord you will see an extra horn for the gray matter that is known as lateral horn of gray matter okay so that you will be seeing only from t1 to l2 and that is for the exit of the sympathetic nervous system the fibers of the sympathetic nervous system and when we talk about the gray matter it is usually multipolar neurons okay it is usually multipolar neurons throughout the gray matter and uh, from the anterior horn so usually these neurons are known as lower motor neurons you, you might have heard a lot about lower motor neurons right so roughly speaking upper motor neurons are the neurons which are situated in the cranial cavity and the lower motor neurons are the neurons if you are talking about the cranial nerves they will be seen in the brain stem and if you are talking about the, the spinal tracts and all then it will be in the spinal cord so these are the lower motor neurons the lower motor neurons are seen in the gray matter especially the anterior horn of the gray matter and they are multipolar in nature now what we are going to do it is now time to discuss about the functional classification of neurons so functionally speaking there are mainly three types of neurons one you can call it as motor neuron okay one you can call it as motor neuron the next type you can call it as sensory neuron and the third type you can call it as interneurons motor neuron sensory neuron and interneuron so altogether when you talk about the gray matter we know that the, you have the neurons you have the neuroglial cells and you have the blood vessels okay so that is what is uh, making up the gray matter so functionally speaking what are the types of neurons you get according to the function you have motor neurons sensory neurons and interneurons so where will you get all these types of neurons motor neurons are confined to the anterior horn and lateral horn okay motor neurons you can look at the anterior horn as well as the lateral horn of gray matter and they are further divided into alpha beta and gamma i think uh, you will be more familiar with the alpha beta gamma neurons in your physiology rather than in anatomy we won't usually stress upon all these neurons but for completion sake i wish to add a bit about alpha beta and gamma alpha neurons are larger neurons compared to the beta and gamma and uh, they are actually supplying the extra fusel muscle fibers okay extra fusel means lying outside the muscle spindle and intra fusel means lying within the muscle spindle you know all these things right so alpha motor neuron are larger neurons and they are supplying the extra fusel muscle fibers what about beta beta is actually the size of beta is between alpha and gamma and they supply both extra fusel and intra fusel fibers and the gamma neurons are actually said to be smaller neurons compared to the other two and they supply the intra fusel so alpha extra fusel gamma intra fusel and beta both b for b beta both okay so that is how you get the motor neurons and where will you get the motor neurons in the anterior horn as well as the lateral horn now coming to the next category according to the function it is the sensory neurons so where will you look for the sensory neurons they are concentrated in the posterior horn of the uh, gray matter and they are also known as association neurons uh, or hmm, intersegmental neurons so it actually made up of as, uh, association and intersegmental neurons and they are actually giving rise to the ascending tracts and intersegmental tracts within the spinal cord so uh, the sensory neurons are confined in the posterior horn of the gray matter and they give rise to 
ascending tracks and intersegmental tracks ascending tracks and intersegmental tracks you have to uh, focus on this point it is very very important because posterior horn neurons their axons are giving rise to the ascending tracks and intersegmental tracks now the third variety according to the function you call it as interneurons so interneurons are neurons seen again throughout the spinal cord and they are actually uh, of two types it can be either inhibitory neurons or it can be uh, excitatory neurons and they are very uh, smaller neurons they just connect the uh, different types of neurons okay and they are actually seen within the spinal cord they won't be projecting out of the spinal cord whereas uh, the other types of neurons the uh, motor as well as sensory neurons their fibers will be either going out to the muscle or it will be going to the towards the brain but whereas the interneurons they are confined within the spinal cord and they are very smaller neurons and they connect the different types of neurons and they can uh, be either excitatory or inhibitory so that is about the interneurons now um, uh, we mentioned about the anterior horn, we mentioned about the posterior horn and we mentioned about the lateral horn. Now the posterior horn is actually not touching the surface of the spinal cord. There is a tract intervening between the posterior horn and the surface. This, known as, this tract is known as Lysias tract. Lysias tract. Okay, so this tract, we will uh, mention about the tracts in the next session. So, Lysias tract is actually bridging the gap between the posterior horn and the surface of the spinal cord. Now, I would like to add one more thing. The anterior horn and posterior horn for easy explanation is divided into different parts. This ventralmost aspect of the anterior horn is known as the head of the anterior horn and this region is known as the base of the anterior horn okay so this is the head and this is the base of the anterior horn likewise the posterior horn has also got different parts so i will just mention it it has got a base then it has got a neck on which you have the head and you have an apex that can be remembered as the cap so base then you have the neck then you have the head and this then you have the apex or you can remember it as the cap that is how the posterior horn is divided so anterior horn is divided as the head and the base whereas the posterior horn is divided as base neck on which head rest and a cap okay or otherwise known as apex that is how the posterior horn is further divided this is just for namesake because some of the books might refer like it is seen towards the base of the posterior horn, it is seen towards the base of the anterior horn, towards the head of the anterior horn. If you see some terminologies, you should not be confused. You should know where the head is when they mention head, where the uh, apex of the posterior horn is. For that, uh, I have just mentioned the different parts of the posterior horn as well as the anterior horn. Now, uh, if, if we say where, where, at which position you have the lateral horn emerging, you can say that it is from the base of the anterior horn. Okay, so this is the basal region of the anterior horn. So it is from the base of the anterior horn you have the lateral horn projecting. So if you know all these points, you can very easily explain exactly where to mark for the lateral horn. Okay, so I think uh, you just got an idea about uh, the different types of neurons according to the function and according to the structure then you know the anterior horn posterior horn and lateral horn uh, they are more bulkier towards the lumbosacral uh, region and in the cervical region whereas it is a bit slender in the thoracic region the anterior horn but in the thoracic region apart from the anterior horn you have an extra horn that is the lateral horn so that is actually compensated now uh, in order to actually uh, un understand the thickness of the anterior horn you should know what are the different types of neurons uh, apart from the simple functional classification or how are these neurons arranged so that will explain uh, how the size got reduced in the thoracic region how it is a bit enlarged in the uh, lumbosacral cervical region and all for that you should know how these neurons are arranged so all these neurons are arranged beautifully in a peculiar manner so i will just rub it off so that you won't be having strain to focus on the rest of the structures which i am going to discuss 
okay so I'm just rubbing it off we have mentioned all these points till now so we are moving on to the details of the arrangement of the uh, anterior horn the lateral horn and the posterior horn okay so uh, first we will start from the anterior horn or the ventral horn so the ventral horn is broadly divided into you can see three circles right you can divide it into medial central and lateral okay so the medial group the central group and the uh, lateral group so the ventral horn uh, the neurons are arranged in the form of medial central and lateral first we will have a look at the medial group of neurons medial group of neurons it is actually divided into a dorsal group and a ventral group so dorsal medial and ventro medial that is how the medial group of neurons in the anterior horn are divided and uh, what are these neurons specialized in so uh, ultimately what happens is these neurons will be sending off the fibers through the anterior root of the spinal nerve okay you here you have the dorsal root and you have the ventral root and finally this will be forming the spinal nerve you know the how a spinal nerve is formed so this will be fibers will be joining the ventral root and will be going out that is roughly how we say about the anterior horn and posterior horn uh, so uh, we will come back to the anterior horn the medial group it is further divided into a dorsal and a ventral group and they are actually seen where will you see the medial group is it in the cervical thoracic lumbar sacral it is seen throughout the spinal cord so that is why I have just uh, put it in dotted form so wherever you see this dotted form that means that structure is seen throughout the length of the spinal cord wherever you take a section you will be seeing this medial group okay and that is given to dorsal and ventral and where are they supplying they are supplying the axial structures like neck and trunk okay so neck and trunk uh, uh, muscles are supplied by the medial group of neurons now uh, going to the lateral group so lateral group where will you look for the lateral group will you get it throughout the length of the spinal cord no they are confined to the cervical and lumbosacral region cervical and lumbosacral region only those two regions you will get the lateral group of uh, neurons why they are seen only in those regions because they are actually supplying the limb muscles so where will you get the limb muscles you have the cervical plexus and the lumbosacral brachial plexus and the lumbosacral plexus right so they are actually going to the limb muscles so in only those two regions you need this lateral group of neurons so they are supplying the limb muscles now coming to the central group so central group has got uh, three types of neurons you can just remember it in the form of lap 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 in the central group so l stands for the lumbosacral neuron lumbosacral neuron seen between l2 to s3 actually the function of this neuron is not yet known i don't know why they have included it maybe to add some more points for you to study right so lumbosacral neuron in the central group is seen from l2 to s3 so in this region if you look you can see in the central region uh, the lumbosacral neuron and a stands for the accessory nucleus you have the spinal accessory you have the cranial accessory as well as spinal accessory the spinal accessory nerve will be arising from the accessory nucleus in the spinal cord so where will you look uh, look for the accessory nucleus so that is seen from c1 to c5 if you look the spinal segments from c1 to c5 in those region you will get the accessory nucleus and where will you look for the accessory nucleus it is in the central group of the anterior horn hope you are get clear getting it clear then p stands for phrenic nerve nucleus so phrenic nerve nucleus where will you look for the phrenic nerve nucleus we know that the root trial of phrenic nerve is c3 to c5 right so if you look the spinal segment from c3 to c5 in that region you will get the phrenic nerve nucleus so again the central group you are not getting the entire central group from top to bottom but in certain regions like uh, c1 to c5 c3 to c5 and in l2 to s3 you will get three types of neurons so that's about the central group so altogether it makes up the anterior horn of the uh, gray matter now we will move on to the intermediate region 
so this is the intermediate region okay intermediate region is actually having two types of neurons so the intermediate neuron is actually divided into two groups a medial group and a lateral group can you see this medial group and lateral group and this is actually concerned with the autonomic nervous system that means the medial group is parasympathetic whereas the lateral group is sympathetic okay so the these group uh, this group of neurons the intermediate group is actually seen between the anterior horn and the posterior horn uh, actually in towards the region of the lateral horn and it has got two groups again it is further divided into two the medial and lateral and uh, the entire thing is concerned with the autonomic nervous system so the medial group is uh, giving rise to the parasympathetic outflow so where will you look for it from s2 to s4 because uh, roughly speaking sympathetic is having a thoracolumbar outflow whereas parasympathetic is having a craniosacral outflow isn't it so this is roughly what we say uh, thoracolumbar for the sympathetic and craniosacral for the parasympathetic that is how the autonomic nervous system leaves our body through the spinal cord so if we say that medial group is parasympathetic parasympathetic craniosacral so it is a sacral component cranial component we are not talking because it is a spinal cord so sacral component you have you can see the, those neurons from s2 to s4 spinal segments and the sympathetic sympathetic is thoracolumbar we have already mentioned that it is making its exit between t1 to l2 so this group of neurons the lateral group will be seen from t1 to l2 that is how we derive all these things so that is the intermediate neurons now we are moving on to the posterior neurons so anterior and lateral are mainly motor isn't it so posterior neurons are main posterior horn contains mainly sensory so uh, the different types of neurons in the posterior horn you can uh, just term uh, it as interneurons and tract cells that is what we call tract cells so the posterior horn is made up of two types of cells the interneurons and tract cells interneurons will be connecting the different neurons whereas tract cells will be giving rise to the ascending tracts okay the ascending tracts are actually derived from the tract cells of the posterior horn uh, so when we uh, deal with the white matter we will be knowing in detail so the tract cells of the posterior horn their axons are giving rise to the ascending fibers of the spinal cord so the, uh, these are the two types of neurons we should get in the posterior horn now let's see how are the neurons in the posterior horn arranged so i have tried a code for this very dynamic possessive sister pearl very dynamic possessive sister pearl so v stands for this this is a v this neuron uh, this neuron is known as visceral efferent nucleus visceral efferent nucleus then dynamic it is here so uh, if v is lateral the d is medial okay so dynamic stands for nucleus dorsalis then p p is actually a bigger nucleus compared to the rest of the nuclei and it is having a major it is occupying a major portion of the posterior column so p stands for nucleus proprius okay nucleus proprius it is uh, the proprius a latin word meaning is uh, from the forefathers so i don't know how it came here but still uh, that is the meaning of the proprius so nucleus proprius is actually having a major uh, position in the posterior column then sister s stands for again here you have the substantia gelatinosa so we have already seen substantia gelatinosa centralis around the central canal but here the substantia gelatinosa is known as substantia gelatinosa of rolando and p stands for postero marginal nucleus or substantia marginalis this is not usually considered as one of the group uh, in the posterior column in many books but uh, i have mentioned this particularly because uh, when we discuss about the rext laminar architecture if you know this portion it will be easy for you to um, study the rext laminar architecture because lamina 1 of rext 
is actually this group okay so that is why i have included so that is the code for the posterior horn uh, i think the video is getting a bit longer so in the next session i will be talking about the details of the uh, nuclear arrangement of the posterior horn so please keep watching